Hi class, today we are talking about math lesson 7-6, uh, seven, six. Seven, six. and this is B because what you previously should have done on 7-6-A was read the story that went along with our math lesson. Okay, so everybody should have read that. And if you haven't, then I want you to pause this. I want you to go back to yesterday's lesson and read that story first because it will really help you understand what we're doing today as far as graphing. Now today, we are going to talk about graphing a line using coordinate points. Before, now we've done some pictures. Uh, so we've made some shapes as we graph. Today, we're going to use points to actually just graph a line, um, which kind of sounds boring when I say it like that, but it's actually really interesting. And businesses, all types of things in real life, use this type of a graph to show um, some data. It gives us information as to, gosh, anything. Um, how much stores are selling of a product, um, and things like that. And what it we talked about yesterday in our story, um, if you remember back, it was talking about um, graphing sports things, right? Okay, so I need you to get your student workbooks, and you're going to turn to page 299. 299. I want to talk a little bit <clears throat> while you're getting those ready. We are talking about ordered pairs. And remember, ordered pairs are put in parentheses like that. I don't know why I'm so off here. Okay. Um, remember that x is we go over on our graph. And the y, we go up. So over for x and up for y. Okay, this is our horizontal line and this is our vertical line. So keep that in mind. We're really going to be talking a lot today about the x and y. Okie dokie. Okay, so let's turn to page 299 in our workbooks. We've got two tables listed right there and a graph. Okay, I had this open, but it closed on me. Okie dokie, so this is your page, right? Okay. It says numerical patterns can be written horizontally or vertically. The add four table below shows a numerical pattern in the left column and the result of adding four in the right column. Okay, so right now we're just focusing on this column right here. They have given us all of the numbers on this side of the column, on the left side of the column. The right side of the column, they kind of gave us a hint already. They said it was an add four column right, in our instructions. And if you look, that makes sense because one plus four equals five. So if you want to go through on all of these, you could write a plus four, plus four, plus four, and so on all the way down so that that might help you out. But what I'd like you to do is take each one of these numbers add four and put it in this column. So here we've got one plus four is five. That one's done for us. Two plus four is six. Okie dokie, we gotta put a six. Three, whoa, sorry for the glare. Three plus four is seven. Okay, so go ahead and finish out that table because I know you can do that now. You're adding four to each of those numbers in the left-hand side and you're putting that answer on the right-hand side. 4 plus 4 is 8, 5 plus 4 is 9, okay? So you should have figured out the rest of your table, and hopefully we all have the same thing. Not all of our tables are going to be add 4. There's going to be different patterns that we're looking at. So here's where when we talked about patterns the other day, that that's kind of coming back into what we're talking about as far as graphing goes. We'll look at some different patterns. But on this actual table, it's add 4. Another one that we do in the future might be, times four, or add two, 
we'll find those patterns later and, and point it out each time. Okay, now, so number one said to complete the add four table. Number two says complete the XY table to show the ordered pairs the add four table represents. Now, I want you to find the XY table is right next to the add four table. You got it? Okay. Now, they're taking those numbers from the first table and they're making our coordinate pairs, our X and our Y. And we're putting those numbers in the parentheses and these will be what we are going to graph. So, let's take a look here. Sorry, these books are just not user friendly this way. On this table, we have one and five. And look right here, they just brought these two numbers right over here. We've got one comma five. One is our X, five is our Y. And that will help us when we go to graph them over here. We're not gonna graph them yet right now. We are going to actually just move our numbers over to here. So it's all of the same numbers. So if one five, comes over here as one five, then our next set looks like two and six. So we need to write two and six over here in our x, y table. Our two becomes our x and our six becomes our y. Okay, the next one I bet you can figure it out. We're just bringing it right over. It's our three and our seven. So we're gonna write a three and a seven right here. Can you finish the rest of these and put them in the X, Y column for me? All right, our two tables should match. Remember, you can pause our videos anytime, so if I'm moving too quickly for you, pause it, catch up, and then push play. Okay, so I've moved all of these over. Four, eight, four, eight, five, nine, five, nine. Now these are my ordered pairs that we're going to graph. You guys have already graphed points before, so you should be a pro at this. The X, remember, from our, our sign right here, the X goes over and the Y goes up. So if our first set of points, or our first set, X, that means we go over one, so I start right at the origin, go over one, and then the five is up. We go up five, one, two, three, four, five. We also could have just looked right there, right? So over one, up five, over one, up five, put a point. Okie dokie. All right, let's do our next one. We have two, six, over two, up, six, put a point. Our next one, three, seven, over three, one, two, three, up seven, here's our seven, right, over three, up seven, put a point. Are you starting to see a pattern on our graph? Will you finish the other two points, please, on your own? You can pause this if you'd like. I'm gonna finish the points and we'll come back together in just a moment. Okay, friends, once you've got your dots, your points, uh, connect them with a line. <clears throat> it's like connect the dot. Da, 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 da. We have a line! Look at that gorgeous little line. I love it. That's what our line should look like. That's what we're doing today is just plotting um, points and making a line. Okay, so we did one through three. Let's look at the next uh, uh, table that's down here at the bottom. This is where we're at right now. Suppose a shrub grows a shrub is a small bush, okay? A shrub grows at the rate shown in the table below. Use the table to complete exercises four and five. 
Okay, so let's take a look at our table. It gives us some information here. It tells us that in zero years, our shrub grows zero feet. Well, that makes sense, right? But in one year, our shrub grows one foot. In two years, our shrub grows two feet. In three years, our shrub grows three feet. And in four years, our shrub grows four feet. Aha. Well, guess what? We could show that information in a beautiful little graph with a line that shows that visually. We don't even have to look at numbers, but we can see how our shrub will grow looking at a graph with a line. So first, number four says to write five ordered pairs that the data represents. No problem, we got this. So let's say that our first side over here, the age, that's our X's. Remember, X is always our first number in our ordered pair, okay? So this one is an X, and then this one, the height, that's gonna be our Y. And the Y is always the second number in the ordered pair, okay? Easy peasy. If that's the case, then that means that our first ordered pair, sorry for the glare, is zero, zero. And remember, we write that in parentheses. Boom, zero, zero, parentheses. Just like so. Zero, zero, in parentheses. Now, the next one, we're going to do our X first and then our Y, which would be the age of one and then the height of one. One, one, in parentheses. Write it down. Okay, just like so. We are getting all of our ordered pairs. Can you think of what the next one would be? Two comma two, you got it, in parentheses, two comma two. We're just taking all that information from our table, we're putting it into our coordinate pairs, and then we're gonna graph it, and it's gonna be amazing. So we got two, two, finish it up for me, three, three, four, four. Okay, so all of this information from the table just became our ordered pairs that we listed right there. Okay, and number five says to graph these ordered pairs and connect the points. Okie dokie, we got this. First of all, do you remember what the zero, zero point is called? The origin. Yes, did you say origin? I knew you did. Okay, we're going to put a point right at the origin because it's zero, zero. And if you can't remember what that is, I want you to take a look right here. Our point's right there, zero, zero. That's our first point. Our next point is going to be one, one, over one, up one. Put your point. The next one is over two, up two, and so on. Finish it out. If you need to pause this, you can. Once you have your points, I would like you to connect them with a line, connect the dots. Did you know that when you were doing connect the dots as a tiny kid that was super fun as a game actually would be something that you would learn was educational in fifth grade? Uh -huh. Okay. Now, for number five, it says the rest, well, let me show you my line first. Let's just compare lines. Does your line look just like that? It should. Okay. So the rest of number five says, what does each axis of the graph represent? Easy peasy. We actually already labeled that. So let's take a look back on this one. We said that these were going to be our X's, right? That's our first, whoa, I'm backwards again. Our X's were our first number, X, Y, X, 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 X. All of the X's represent the age of the shrub. All of the Y's 
all of the Y's represent the height of the shrub. Aha. So the X axis represents the age in years and the Y axis represents the height in feet. We're in feet, right? Yep, feet. Boom. We write that for number five. The X axis represents the height. Nope. Whoa, Mrs. Norman, start over. The X axis represents the age in years. The Y axis represents the height in feet. We got it, right? That whole one side was X's, the whole other side was Y's. We had age, we had height. Perfect, and we got our line all graphed, so we are rocking and rolling. Let's move on a little bit. I want you to change your, um, let's see here. Yeah, change your page. We're gonna look at page 300 just quickly. I think you guys are getting this pretty quickly. Okay. So now we're on page 300, looks like this. Let's take a look and see what we can do on this one. Real world problems. So these are things that could actually happen, that you could actually graph. Every 20 minutes, a dripping faucet leaks 10 milliliters of water. Ooh, they need to call a plumber because that's a big leak. Complete the table. Milliliters aren't that big, actually. But Complete the table. I'm on number six. Complete the table to show the amount of water that will leak in 0, 40, and 60 minutes. Hmm. Okay, so we've got, we're completing this table right here. Um, now, let's think about this rationally. If we had zero minutes, how much would the faucet leak? Zero milliliters, right? Okay, so we're gonna put zero for that. Okay. Um, And we need to show what our uh, what our pattern is, right, between the top row and the next row. Okay. So we have 20 on this row and 10 on this row. Let's think about um, what operation we would use to go from 20 to 10. 10. 20 to 10. We could subtract 10, but that's not going to work for all of mine. So really what we're doing, I want to concentrate on is we are dividing by 2. 20 divided by 2 is 10. If I did the same thing and I did divided by 2, divided by 2, can you see that up close? Divided by 2, divided by 2, if I did that on each of those, 40 divided by 2 is 20. I can't write that backwards, so I've got to take it like that. And 60 divided by 2 is 30. Then I've got my table complete. I can take these numbers and put them in as ordered pairs right down here. So my first one would be 0, 0. Okay, let's put it in. I think it's important to note, though, which one of these lines is going to be our x and which one is going to be our y. So let's go ahead and mark it. Well, let's make the time be our x, which is our first coordinate in our pair, and the amount of water be our y. 
which is the second number in our pair. So this line is going, the bottom line is going to be the second number in our pair. So we're actually pairing them up like this. Ah, see how our pattern assignment was helpful last week? Yeah. Okay, so our next ordered pair that we're going to write is this set of numbers right here, 20, 10. Okay. Our next ordered pair that goes right here is the third one over, boom, boom, boom. We have 40, 20. 40 is our X, 20 is our Y. Boom. Will you finish the last one, please? It's this set right here. Put it as an ordered pair right here. And then it tells us to graph it. I want you to pause this right now. I want you to graph it on your own. We'll come back and compare and make sure we're all together. All right, I'm graphing right now. I can't pause my video, but I'm a pretty quick grapher. So if your line looks like this, da -da -da -da, then we are in business. Good job, my little graphers. You're amazing. That's all we're going to do together today. If you would like to finish the next real world problem on your own, which is numbers 9 and 10, you are sure welcome to do that. Um, just for fun, because you love to graph. I know it. I know it. Um, let's take a look at your homework here. This is homework 7-6. You have just two tables, well, two problems with a few pro things to do on each problem. <laughs> so 7-6 homework, you need to fill in the two tables, just like we just did, and then you're going to graph your ordered pairs, okay? Remember on the first table, it says to add three. I told you before when we were adding four that that was the only problem or it was just that specific problem that we were adding four that we might add something else or multiply by something else for other tables. This one we're adding three. So if you look at it, it's zero and three. Zero plus three is three. One plus three is four. Two plus three is five. So fill in those numbers on your seven, six homework. Then, on the next table that says x, y, you're just taking those numbers from the first table that you filled in, and you did the add three, and you're just sliding them over to your ordered pairs, your x, y table. Okay? Same numbers. You're just taking them from here, boom, over to the next table, the x, y table. And those will be the uh, coordinate pairs, those points that you're going to graph on the graph that's to the right. Okie dokie. Okay. Um, we have, yes, well, well I'll, I'll let you know when we're going to get together so that we can take a look at these and make sure that we're all on the same page and we can correct it, okay? We'll just keep in touch. If you have questions or concerns, don't hesitate to let me know. I think you guys are amazing and you're doing a great job. We'll talk soon.